Very few men in gaming are as respected as Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Redemption and Joel Miller from The Last of Us. These are normal men willing to do what they need to protect the ones they care for, but how exactly would they match up? Joel is a man thrown into a world of monsters and raw human nature, and that's what you can expect from him at 6 foot and 200 pounds. He tends to carry a Taurus 66, a 7 shot revolver, a Mossberg 500, and an M16. He also has homemade explosives and Molotov cocktails, but also a skilled gunman, surviving and training with his military background brother, being a better shot than most people landing headshots on dozens of infected charging at Ellie upside down and is able to eradicate the Firefly group alone against huge odds and for Joel's strength a good place to start is his ability to overpower most men in game with few exceptions like getting caught off guard. He can crush the weakened head of infected or cut through the thick fungus like armor on the bloater hacking its arm off killing it saving Ella. Not really being a one off we see Abby fending off the Rat King with Joel strong enough to lift massive amounts of ceiling debris to let people get through momentarily. For durability he isn't just a glass cannon we've seen Joel fall from multiple stories like when the elevator gave out walking it off or similarly in the university when pushed off the railing and impaled into a piece of rebar and still able to move around taking out people in the process. The fact that he would have survived after getting shot and the beating he took from Abby or even just getting slammed into the rock in the rapids really goes to prove all that. With speed we don't have many solid feats but we can say he outruns infected who catch most people in game so baseline is pretty peak human. He even somewhat reacts before the sniper could hit the ground almost superhuman. Also something we could say is Joel has pretty keen senses the game represents this in gameplay as listen mode, but this aspect helps him triumph over most men and monsters. Arthur Morgan, a man in the fading Wild West, a formidable gunslinger and a crew of outlaws standing 6'1", weighing 180 pounds. For weapons, you could generally expect him to carry a cattleman revolver, a six shot firing a 45, a Lancaster repeater, a lever action, or a double barrel or bolt action. Similar to Joel, a plethora of throwables, things you could have like dynamite, throwing knives, or tomahawks. And for Dada, I do believe there are lore implications for it being individuals with superior speed and skill. We see this with some characters at points not being affected, like Micah before being shot by Dutch, and when Dutch wasn't affected when Arthur shot the people about to kill John. So the idea of these people are comparable or better, some might argue. We can also see Arthur carry fully grown men, helping to lift a tree weighing upwards of a ton, or fighting Tommy, a massive 6 foot, 265 pound man, caving in his skull. Even putting down the mentally challenged giant Bertram who is lashing out. And if you want to say the feat of fending off the bear with the knife is cannon, you could say that, but... It really comes up to what you believe is a gameplay mechanic versus not. For durability, we see Tommy attack him and chuck him out of a window. We've seen him tortured multiple times by the O'Driscolls or the Fusar henchmen and able to fight after. Large falls are nothing too. We see him caught up in a huge accident, one with a trolley car crashing into a horse carriage where he battles after, and similarly when riding in a carriage, having dynamite ignite on the road, flying off the carriage and slamming into the ground fine after like earlier. And if you consider the bear fight cannon, you could say he took a thousand pound bear slamming into him. His speed is better than most men in game, able to outpace and catch people, but being pretty normative in the grand scheme of things. But he has insane endurance, able to fight through late stage tuberculo, perform at a similar level as before. With ship crashes, gunshot wounds, and beatings, just getting tanked by this mount. Since these two are sort of normal humans, we can start at strength. I would say physicality wise, they are in that high end of game human level, not too off from each other, both lifting things a little under half a ton range momentarily. When we see them use their strength in battle, Joel seems to be able to throw it around better, more fast twitch muscle. We definitely see that in the bloater fight. He's just pumped up on adrenaline. Now he has a machete, but the speed and power difference is visible. To the extent skill doesn't matter, no, that's where Arthur's showing his skill being more refined in striking and striking defense, where Joel is more of a street brawler, outstrengthing his enemies in an intelligent but less skilled way. This is an area where both have a fair shot against each other, leaning Joel slightly, especially if he has a knife or a machete or anything like that. But that's less likely to happen because of guns, and when it comes to it, it is fairly easy to say Arthur's skills are beyond that of Joel's, considering the fact that he's two and a half times faster than the current exhibition shooter. Now they do both have around 20 years of experience handling weapons, so obviously Joel isn't just doomed, but it definitely makes his win cons more situational, which would make sense considering his character and where he excels, in situations where he can catch Arthur off guard in an area with heavy cover. So obviously in a situation like that, you could win easily, but in most real or normal encounters, the skill difference with weapons would just be too much of a mountain to climb. So in varying situations that could happen more times than not, Arthur is taking this. With hand-to-hand -hand combat not being something he wants to engage in, but not really having to engage in. What matchups do you want to see next? Ranking the Fallout protagonist, Guts versus someone random, Frieza Force versus the Height of the Horse Heresy. So if you want to see more videos, comment some matchups, get this video to like a thousand comments, and argue that people's comment ideas are subpar. So like and subscribe, you know. Bye bye.